All right, I think we are on time, 15.25. So welcome everyone to our session about how to make your Kubernetes add-on management painless in a multi-cloud environment. My name is Eleni Grosduli. I'm a DevOps consulting engineer at Cisco Systems and my expertise lies around GitOps approaches. I'm a technical writer hobbyist and I'm a strong believer of the break it and fix it approach. And today I'm joined with uh, Gianluca Mardente. Over to you. And um, my name is Gianluca. I'm a principal engineer at Cisco. Um, I work in the open source mostly on Kubernetes and uh, I spent uh, more time than I should on fantasy soccer. <laughs> All right. So you will get most out of this talk. If you have deployed a Kubernetes application beforehand, if you have used any CI CD tooling out there, and if you have familiarity with uh, Kubernetes manifest files, if you don't align with those points, that's all right. I hope you will learn something new and try it out in your lab. That's some of the prerequisites for our sort of technical talk, I would say. What are we going to cover today? Uh, we're going to start our discussion by um, speaking about some of the challenges when it comes to deploy different applications in a multi-cloud setup. Then we will continue um, a bit more about Sveltos, what Sveltos is, why Sveltos, how Sveltos works. And on the end of the day, hopefully we will understand why Sveltos is here to help you relieve those challenges. I will continue with a small demo that I'm going to split into two parts, part one and part two, which I'm going to give you some details a bit later on. And last but not least, you will have the ability to ask uh, any questions that you might have. So let's get into it. And I very much like this slide because usually it's me when I feel uh, frustrated and that's a cartoon uh, created by a colleague, Roger Dickinson. So I've been in operations for quite some time, uh, but when I start uh, working more with Kubernetes, I find it extremely challenging uh, to identify which configuration is applied to which cluster. Um, I also had a big problem trying to come up with a golden template on how I can basically orchestrate the deployment of different applications that I have. For example, if application A needs to be deployed before application B, then how do I do that with existing tooling out there? Then the pain becomes even bigger uh, when I have to dynamically, let's say, pre-populate my manifest files. The existing tooling out there does not provide an easy way for me to do that and thus I was feeling frustrated that, like the cartoon here. And if we take it one step further and we start talking about multi-tenant environments in a multi-cloud setup, then it's complex because you, not only you have to deal with the fact that you need to deploy applications within this multi-tenant environment, but what about Airbag? How do you deal with those problems? Now over to you, and hopefully this is going to load. What are some of your biggest pains that you experience while deploying Kubernetes applications? I have an anonymous slider here, so if you want, take out your phone. Hopefully you have an internet connection and share your pains, basically, which we're going to use um, a bit later in the presentation. And I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for you uh, to do that. If not, then uh, I will continue without. While waiting, do you want to share some of your pains? Because, I mean, you created Sveltos, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I started because we were doing a project where we were managing a fleet of clusters. And essentially, I noticed that we had, like, many controllers to, to the, deploy the CNI, deploy the storage, and the ingress, and a bunch of other things. And each of those controllers was reinventing the wheel, deploying stuff in each of those managed clusters. And that was the time where I decided like, okay, uh, probably we can abstract this problem, make it like solve it one way. And then, uh, so everybody can simply say, this is what I need to be deployed in those sets of clusters. And there was a single tool that was deploying it. So avoiding reinventing the wheel anytime we needed like a new controller or a new feature. All right, I'm going to give it a couple of uh, seconds for the three participants to 
to complete their sentence, data privacy, security, ease of management, I like this one because I am experiencing the same pain here. <laughs> Traceability. <laughs> or, <laughs> Cloud specific, <laughs> Azure identity. Actually, it's look at what you mentioned before with Egress resources. All right. All right. One more than it's typing. Um, all right, cool. So, how many of you do you know Sveltos? All right. <laughs> Um, so Sveldos basically it's a Kubernetes add-on controller that is or is created to basically simplify the deployment of different and deployment uh, management of different add-on controllers within a fleet of clusters. Sveltos, as Gianluca mentioned already, was created uh, by taking into consideration all those pains that came up with the existing tooling out there. And now you're going to ask me why Sveltos. Again, uh, Sveltos was created based on uh, those challenges and uh, it comes with a list of rich features to complement or even replace existing uh, continuous creation, continuous deployment tool. This is a list of features that are basically used pretty much every day. So Sveltos um, allows Kubernetes add-ons and applications to be represented and stipulated. And what that means, and Gianluca is going to mention it a bit later, Sveltos has the ability to read data from a management cluster, so the brain of your deployments, use that data and then pre-instantiate um, manifest files. Uh, moving a bit further, Sveltos provides out-of-the-box support for multi-tenant environments using specific uh, custom resource definitions, CRDs, and Gianluca is going to come to it a bit later. Um, the third one, which I appreciate the most, is the fact that uh, with Sveltos, I have the ability to control the deployment order of different applications in a straightforward and easy manner. So top-bottom approach, I define my applications there, and then Sveltos is going to take care and deploy those things for me without worrying about uh, the deployment order. Let's continue to the events. So another uh, feature that I use quite often uh, is the fact that Sveltos allows you to programmatically create your events. So basically, we utilize the Luga programming language to specify what sort of events we're going to expect or we will have within a cluster. And then based on that event, trigger an action. Last but not least, you don't have to uh, what's the Svelto CLI or the Svelto resources, but instead you will configure uh, notifications and then uh, Svelto is going to notify you uh, if something changed within your application uh, state. And of course, we'll provide uh, different endpoints uh, for Slack, Discord, WebEx uh, and Teams. Now, a bit of Sveltos. Thank you. So Sveltos, um, it's... Uh an add-on management that uh, runs in the management cluster. And from the management cluster, you can um, manage add-ons and application in a fleet of clusters. It has built-in support for cluster API. So if you're familiar for cluster API, that simply means that if you have cluster API running in the management cluster and you use cluster API to create on-demand Kubernetes clusters, Sveltos automatically detects those clusters. So you can tell Sveltos automatically to deploy add-ons and application on those clusters. No extraction is needed on your side. But Sveltos is not limited to cluster API. If you have any other Kubernetes cluster that you want to be managed by Sveltos, whether this cluster is on-prem or is on the cloud, you can simply register to be managed by Sveltos. Sveltos comes with a CLI. If you use this Sveltos CLI, that is one line command to register. The only things that Sveltos require is that there is, of course, like network connectivity from the management cluster to the cluster that you want to be managed. But if that is there, Sveltos can manage, like once you register a cluster, Sveltos can manage add-ons and application in this cluster. I want to mention one thing here, whether your cluster are created with cluster API or you have a cluster and you register with Sveltos, there is a cluster instance that is created in the management cluster to represent that cluster. And those cluster instances are namespaced. And I will come back on why I'm highlighting like, that these cluster instances are namespaced in a bit. Uh, Sveltos offers two types, mainly two customer source definition that allows you to say what you want to be deployed where. 
Cluster profile and profile, they are almost exactly the same. They allow to select a set of clusters using a cluster selector, which is nothing but a Kubernetes label selector, and uh, list all the add-ons that you want to be deployed. The only difference is that a cluster profile is a cluster-wide CRD, while the profile is a namespace CRD. And the reason there are two, it's because there might be like different use cases that you're dealing with. For instance, one use case is that uh, you own all those clusters, all those clusters are yours. So in this case, pretty much you can simply use a cluster profile and you can match any cluster. But another use case might be whether you are onboarding tenants, you are a provider and you are onboarding tenants and you are creating cluster for every tenant. Now in this scenario, one way you will solve it is that when you onboard tenant one, in the management cluster, you create a namespace for tenant one. And now any cluster that you create for tenant one, you create in that namespace. And when you onboard tenant two, you create a namespace for tenant two. And any cluster that you create for tenant two, you put it in that namespace. The cluster instance represents the cluster in the management cluster, you put in the tenant two namespace. Now at this point, you can tell tenant one and tenant two, you can manage the application in all your cluster using the management cluster. Simply create a profile. So tenant one can create a profile in his own namespace, and the profile is only gonna match clusters which are in that namespace. Tenant two can create his own profile, saying those are the list of applications that I want in my cluster, and that profile is gonna match only namespace clusters which are in the tenant two namespace, so only clusters that belong to tenant two. So now you have tenant one and tenant two both using the management cluster, but they're not interfering with each other. At the same time, if you are the platform admin and you want to decide, okay, in any cluster I want to deploy Cilium because the CNI must be Cilium and this is the version of the CNI that I want, you can create a cluster profile and a cluster profile is gonna match any cluster irrespective of the namespace. So the cluster profiles is for the platform admin, the profile is for the tenant admin, assuming that you're onboarding tenants in the management cluster. Thank you. Um, and uh, both cluster profile and profile are exactly, as I said, like the same resources. So except one is namespace, as already mentioned. And uh, they allow to select a set of clusters using a cluster selector, which again is nothing but a Kubernetes label selector. Any managed cluster is represented in the, name, in the management cluster by a cluster resource. You add label to this cluster resource. You add the cluster selectors, you select a subset of those resources. And then they allow to list the applications that you want to be deployed. Those can be Helm charts, those can be resources aggregated with customize, those can be like raw, YAML, or JSON. It doesn't matter, like, it's gonna, Zveltos can handle all those and can deploy all those. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is a simple example of a cluster profile. So there is one section, uh, line 729, uh, I don't know if the font is good, but hopefully it is, where essentially we are selecting uh, all the clusters which are production cluster, label environment production. And again, this case is a cluster profile, so it's gonna select like any cluster with this label irrespective of the namespace. If this was a profile, a profile is a namespace resources, so it will still match any cluster with label environment production, but only in its own namespace. And then there are various sections where you can list the applications that needs to be deployed. In this case, we have like an Elm chart section where you can list one or more Elm charts. We are asking like to deploy Caverno, a specific version. And then you can also, there is a customization ref section where you can say, okay, I have a bunch of customized files. In this case, those customized files are on a Git repo, which is synced in the management cluster with Flux. So Zveltos take those bunch of files, run the customized SDK on top of it, instantiate if those are templates instantiated, and then deploy it. And finally, there is the policy ref section where you can tell Zveltos, um, this is the location where you can find a bunch of YAML or JSON, Kubernetes Resources Express or YAML or JSON, take it and deploy it. In this case, again, we're using Flux, but you can also, if you don't want to use like a GitOps approach, you can also put those YAML and JSON in a config map in the management cluster or in a sequence in the management cluster, as Zveltos reference it, and Zveltos is going to take the content and deploy it. Back to you.
All right, excellent. So, hope you are excited about a demo. Um, so, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I'm going to split the demo into two parts. In part one, we will deploy Cilium as our CNI. So, what I did before, uh, I mean, today, this morning, I've already created my management cluster and I've already installed uh, Sveltos and Flux. And of course, for Flux, I've already um, synchronized the public Git repository that I'm uh, storing some YAML files. And for the first part, as I said, I'm going to show you how a cluster profile looks like in order to take over the lifecycle of your um, CNI, basically. In the second part of the demo, I would like to show you how seamlessly and easy it is to deploy different uh, policies alongside with installing Inferno on those uh, two managed clusters. Um, I don't know if you can see it, maybe it's a bit small, but uh, for those two clusters, I'm using ENV test label for the top one and DNV prod uh, for the second one. And basically, I'm going to show you how Sveltos match those clusters based on the label. So, right. Hopefully, you can see my terminal okay. Or the font is okay because I don't think I can make it bigger. So. <laughs> Bear with me. So we're connected to our management cluster, and it's a cluster that I have installed already as Veltos there. So let's prove our point. Okay, that's my cluster. This particular cluster, it's an RK2 cluster hosted in our data center in Berlin. And let me query the resources within the project's Veltos namespace. And we see that everything is in a running state, so Sveltos is functioning as expected. Now, before I register the managed clusters with Sveltos, I will create two new namespaces, test and prod. And basically, I'm going to register those clusters within uh, the particular namespaces. All right, they're created. And let's double check that everything is there. Looks good. And now, let me show you what I have uh, in this particular cluster. So basically, I'm using Flux to synchronize with a public Git repository uh, that I'm storing the manifest files that I'm going to deploy in part two. Now what we do, we go ahead and we use the Sveltos command line for ease of use, and we register the first cluster. So for that first cluster, uh, we're going to register it in the namespace test, and we're going to give it a name cluster09, alongside with a label. Again, the label is quite important for what we do. And let me do the same for the prod cluster. Again, I mean, the difference here is only the namespace, the name of the cluster and the label um, specifying. Now, we have the ability to query for these Veltos cluster resource within our management cluster. And what I expect to see here, indeed, we have two new clusters, prod01 and test09 within the prod and the test namespace, and they have successfully registered with uh, Sveltos. Let me connect to cluster 09, which is one of my clusters, and let me show you that I don't have a CNI there. At least I don't see it, and it's not there, actually. And let me do the same for the prod 01. Again, no CNI there. And now, let's go to the interesting stuff. Then Luca mentioned about how a cluster profile looks like, and what we've done here, we've created a cluster profile exclusively uh, for deploying Cilium uh, on that uh, test cluster. So what is important uh, here is the fact that, okay, the kind of that resource is a cluster profile, because we want it to be applied on our cluster as a whole. Uh, we provide a name, of course, and then in uh, the specifications, we set the label. In this case, it's CNV test. So what we really say, if you have, as well as if you see any clusters with this particular label, then go ahead and deploy this Helm chart. In this case, it's Cilium of version 1.15.6, which is going to get deployed in the Cube system namespace. And we also uh, instruct Sveltos to please enable the Hubble UI in this instance, because we want to have a single pane of class for our network um, connections on that cluster. So let me quit here and let me show you how the production cluster profile looks like, which is very similar to what we've seen before. What is different is the name, the label, and the version of Cilium that I want to deploy. Let me quit. 
And again, we're within our management cluster, so let me deploy those uh, resources. Two new cluster profiles have been created. And now let's go to cluster 09. What do we expect here to see? Basically, Cilium getting installed, right? <laughs> And let's prove our point. So before I do that, let me double check with the Sveltos that this is the case. And indeed, we see a new application. It's a Helm chart. Um, the name is Cilium that we deployed within the Cube system namespace of version 1.15.6. And let's do the same for the Prod01 from a Sveltos point of view. I see the same. But again, uh, different version, uh, but Cilium. If I go to the cluster, and let's uh, get only the Cilium and Humble resources. It's there. You've seen it's been created a couple of seconds ago. Let me break. And let's continue. Just to prove the point that we've installed the version that I showed you in the cluster profile. 1.15.6 within our test cluster. That looks good. Let's continue in the Prod01 cluster. Again, similar approach. Cilium is there. Humble is there. All good. Uh, let's double check the version just to make sure everything is in order. Yoohoo! 1.14.8 is there. All right. Um, end of demo one. At the end of the line, I forgot to put uh, a space, but uh, we can continue with the presentation. Okay. Uh, so this part is about templating, which to me it's. Uh the main differentiator between Sveltos and other tools that allows you to deploy add-ons and application in a fleet of clusters. So Sveltos, as we have seen, runs in the management cluster. Sveltos is clearly aware of that and want to take full advantage of that. And so what Sveltos allows you to do is to express your, the resources that you want to be deployed as a template. And Sveltos can instantiate those templates at runtime, so at the time it's going to deploy these resources in a managed cluster, using information which is present in the management cluster. So if you wish, you can see the management cluster as a sort of uh, database that you can use to instantiate the template that represents your resources. So in this case, for instance, what we want to do is to create a Cilium cluster mesh. And so we have two cluster, cluster one and cluster two. And when we deploy Cilium in this mode, when we deploy Cilium on cluster one, we need to pass the certificate and key of cluster two. And when we deploy Cilium in cluster two, we need to pass the uh, certificate and key of cluster one. So what we are telling Sveltos is, I want to deploy, I want you to deploy Cilium, this version, 1.15.6. And if you look at the value section, the value section is expressed as a template. And it depends on this uh, Cilium config resource. And what the Cilium config resource is a config map which is present in the management cluster, which is expressed in line 10 to 15. So what we are telling Sveltos is whenever you have to deploy, whenever you have to deploy Cilium, first you get this resource, which is in the management cluster. But if you look at the name, line 14, the resource is, is itself expressed as a template. It depends on the cluster name. So when Sveltos is deploying Cilium in cluster one, Sveltos is going to take the config map, which is present in the management cluster, which is called Cilium config cluster one. And the Cilium config cluster one, we pre-populated it with the certificate and key of cluster two. So Sveltos is fetching this resource, which contains the certificate and key of cluster two. It's going to take the value section, which is a template, it's going to instantiate with the content of this config map, and then it's going to deploy Cilium. So what we have done, we have deployed Cilium on cluster one using the certificate and key of cluster two. Now, when Cilium, when Sveltos goes to deploy Cilium on cluster two, Sveltos is going to get a different config map because now the config map that is going to be is going to be Cilium config cluster two. And this config map contains the certificate and key of cluster one. So what Sveltos is going to do, take this config map, take the content, again, instantiate the value section, and deploy Cilium. So now we have Cilium on cluster one, which contains the certificate and key of cluster two, and Cilium on cluster two, which, con which has the certificate and key of cluster one. So we have pretty much deployed like uh, um, 
psyllium uh, cluster mesh with all that it needs. Uh, yes, please, next slide. Um, this is another feature of Sveltos that, I wanna, that we want to mention. So sometimes uh, um, you have to deploy like multiple applications. And sometimes those applications are independent, so they don't care about each other. They can be deployed in parallel. But other times you have to deploy application where you have like application three, which depends on application two, which depends on application one. So you have a state machine on um, how those application needs to be deployed. So Svelte is allowed to say that uh, uh, a cluster profile depends, so Svelte you can say cluster profile three depends on cluster profile two, which depends on cluster profile one. So if you do that, what Svelte is going to do is going to deploy cluster profile one, and only when cluster profile one is successfully deployed, it's going to deploy cluster profile two, and when this is successfully deployed, it's going to deploy cluster profile three. Now sometimes you simply want the resources to be applied to the cluster, and that is good. Other times you need those resources to be in a certain state. For instance, you want all the deployments, uh, replicas to be up and running. If simply deploying a deployment is not enough, you want to wait for the deployment replica to be up and running. Other times, for instance, you may want, you are deploying a load balancer, and you may need the external IP to be assigned to the uh, load balancer service. So what Sveltos allows you to do is to have a validate health section, where again, we use Lua a lot. You can put like a Lua script that says, that tells Sveltos, fetch the resources. In this case, we are telling Sveltos, fetch all the deployment in the Caverna namespace, and this cluster profile, it's successfully deployed only when the available replicas match the uh, required replicas. Only at that point, this cluster profile is going to be matched as, it's going to be marked by Sveltos as successfully deployed. All and right. <laughs> Demo part two. Um, in the demo part two, as I mentioned, we're going to deploy Kiverno and a set of policies by utilizing the validate healths of Sveltos. So let's do that actually, back to our management cluster. I'm going to show you how the cluster profile to do that looks like for the test cluster. And again, very similar approach on what we've seen before. We have a kind cluster profile, different name because we're going to deploy Kiverno in this policy and the label for the test cluster remains the same. And the first top part, we have um, the instruction that we want to deploy uh, this particular Kiverno uh, application of version 3, uh, 2, 5. And then below that, we have the validate healths that um, Gianluca just explained to you, that this application will only report back to Sveltos that it's healthy only when the available replicas match the desired uh, number of replicas I want to have. And once this is done, then we are going to create the Kiverno policies. So in this case, we use Flux that has been connected to our public uh, Git repository and is going to go within this path, Kiverno policies slash test, and it's going to deploy any uh, Kiverno policies defined as a YAML file there. And let's uh, double check what we have for the prod cluster, but it should be very similar. The only difference, again, it's the label, the name, and the version of Kiverno I'm going to... Uh, Define alongside with the policy reference, which is on a different folder in this particular case scenario. So let's deploy those resources. I mean, the cluster profiles in this case. And again, what I expect to happen is Sveltos to first install Kiverno. And once Kiverno returns back and says, I'm healthy, then deploy uh, the Kiverno policies on that cluster. And let's see what is happening from a Svelto's point of view. Voila, we have Kiverno already installed, plus the two policies uh, that I wanted to uh, set on my cluster. The same goes for the Prod01 cluster. Again, the same view. Kiverno has been successfully installed 15, uh, uh, 1553, and after almost like uh, not even uh, a minute, we had the policies deployed on our cluster. And let's double check from the cluster itself. Policies and false and true. Looks good to me. Let's continue with the prod. I would expect to see the policies deployed there as well. And again, validation of all the add-ons we have within our different clusters. And that's it from a Devon point of view. 
let's go back to the presentation. Um, as we reach the end of the presentation today, I would like to leave you with some resources. So if you want to try out Sveltos or get to know more about Sveltos, feel free to reach out to our GitHub uh, repository, then you will find all the information there. If you have any questions, issues, remarks, feel free to join our Slack channel. And I will highly recommend to have a look at our official documentation as you will see locates all the, the list of the features that we provide alongside with examples how you can use it. And I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. So do you have any questions for us? Go for it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Damir. Uh, I would like to ask a question about Sveltos. Uh, is it uh, a tool that is uh, generally uh, useful for uh, managing clusters uh, in general terms or just for these uh, applications that were demoed here? Oh, no, you can use for any applications that you might need to be deployed. And again, those applications can be um, anything. Elm charts, customized resources, YAML or JSON. Actually, uh, you can go a step further because Sveltos can also manage resources in the management cluster. And so you can pipe Sveltos with other open source tools. For instance, I use Sveltos a lot with external secrets operator. So I have the external secrets operator sync the secrets from an external secret management system into the management cluster. And then I have Sveltos distribute the secrets to all your managed cluster. So now you have a single place where you sync from your external management secrets. And then you have Sveltos that uh, distributes those like to all, the, to all the managed clusters. Or you can pipe with crossplane if you have to create resources on the fly and in the cloud. For instance, if you have to create a bucket, then, then one of your application deployed in one of the managed clusters is going to use, you can tell Sveltos to configure crossplane to create a bucket. So Sveltos tells crossplane create a bucket, crossplane creates the bucket, updates the status resource. Sveltos now take the status resource information, which is the bucket URL, and pass it like instantiate a pod that then is going to consume this bucket. And so you can pipe it with any other uh, open source tool. There are like examples on how to pipe with external secrets operator and crossplane uh, in the uh, documentation, so you may take a look. But essentially, to answer your question, any applications you might have. Thank you. So I, I saw that you were using Flux. Um, am I correct that the only part of Flux that you actually use is the source controller because everything else is done by Sveltos? Yes, yes. The only part is if you want to use like a GitOps approach, essentially, Sveltos is integrated with Flux, so you can tell Flux to sync the Git repo in the management cluster, and then Sveltos is the one that is going to consume it and deploy it to the managed cluster. Okay. Thank you. Um, what scale has this been tested against in terms of numbers of clusters? Because managing from one place can, we've seen it with Argo CD and Flux, not go very well many times. So just wondering what scale this has been tested against. So, I mean, um, I haven't tested with hundreds of clusters. That's you guys, because it's open source, like I don't have like that kind of fun, like to test with many clusters. But Sveltos has a built-in sharding mechanism. So uh, essentially, if you keep adding clusters, you can add an annotation on a cluster, meaning this is a shard one. And so what, uh, there is one shard controller that Sveltos deployed. As soon as you mark a cluster with this annotation, uh, this shard controller is going to create a new instance of Sveltos in the management cluster to manage those clusters here. So essentially, you can say it's like, Let's say that 100 is the maximum number of clusters that Sveltos can manage. When you add that cluster 101, you add the annotation. So a new instance of Sveltos is deployed in the management cluster, which is going to manage this resource. So as long as you have enough resources, nodes, and CPU and memory in your management cluster, you can keep adding cluster and you can keep scaling uh, Sveltos. And there is also like one other point, which is uh, compare like to the way like uh, 
Sveltos does the drift detection compared like to Argo CD. So Sveltos is an agent per cluster. So unless there is a change in the managed cluster, so there is a real drift configuration, Svelto does nothing. Uh, I was at KubeCon in Paris, and um, actually this topic came up because uh, I cannot name like which company, but they use like Argo CD, and they were having problem because like from time to time the their con uh, network communication between the management cluster and the managed clusters were going down, and when it was coming up, Argo CD was trying to reconcile everything. Uh, Sveltos works in a different way. When the communication goes down and it comes back up, Sveltos sees that the agent that is running in the managed cluster says no drift has ever happened, and so is a no for Sveltos. So if you compare those two cases, Sveltos does nothing in that case. It's like everything is good, so uh, I'll keep it the way it is. Any... So the uh, Sveltos running in the management cluster is the one that is going to go in and deploy those resources. So if uh, you have Helm charts, uh, JSON, whatever, as soon as Sveltos detects, okay, this cluster is a match for this cluster profile, it takes the resources that are in that uh, cluster profile and deploys those resources in the managed cluster. So the flow goes from the management cluster to the managed cluster. I don't know if that was, okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and before we close, thanks to all the Sveltos Ooh. maintainers and uh, contributors. Thanks to organizers here that they gave us the ability to even talk about Sveltos. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for participating and attended. Thank you, guys. Thank you.